Hi, everybody. It's Ricky Heller from rickyheller.com. I'm a writer, editor, and book coach. I help you find, shape, and then write that book that's inside of you. And you might just discover you find out more of who you are in the process. So today I want to talk about how do you actually get yourself writing? I hear from so many people who say, I want to write a book, but yet it never seems to happen. I think there are five habits you can instill or five practices that can actually lead you to writing that book. So, okay, here we go. The first one is, and this sort of precedes everything else. The first thing you need to do is decide, commit to writing a book. It has to be a conscious decision. It has to be something to which you are truly committed you need to prioritize writing your book the way you prioritize other things that are important to you, going to the gym, brushing your teeth, taking your kids to daycare, whatever it is, you need to prioritize writing that book. Once you've decided in your heart, soul, mind that this is something you really want to do, you're going to be set up to be much more successful at it. So that's number one. That's the foundation. All right. Number two. This one's a tricky one because people will say, I really wanted to write today, but I just didn't have any inspiration. I didn't feel creative today, so I couldn't write anything. Another version of that is writer's block. I want you to remove those excuses from your life. I don't care if you don't feel inspired. I don't care if you don't feel creative. You're going to write anyway. Think of it this way. When you or if you ever had a nine to five job and you were an employee somewhere and you went to work and you had a project due or your boss assigned something to you and you didn't feel inspired or you didn't feel like doing it. Did you just say, sorry, I don't feel like it today. It, nothing's coming to me. I'm not going to hand that in on time. No, of course not. You did it anyway. And it's the same thing with your writing. In fact, even if you don't feel inspired, if you start writing, you will find more often than not that the creativity, the inspiration comes. It's a, it's a function of actually writing. So take that action first, start writing first, and you'll surprise yourself with just how much inspiration you really do have once you start writing regularly. Okay, number three, take any little bits of time that you can grab during the day to write. I know we're all busy. I know time is a factor. People may not have an hour long chunk to sit down at their desk or wherever and write their book, write their memoir, whatever it is. However, all of us have at least five minutes here and there, right? And I've said this before, I know many writers who compose an entire novel in five minute chunks. So if you can find five minutes here or five minutes there between work and workout, between workout and time at home in the evening, between dinner and bedtime, whatever it might be, even five minutes is good. And if you add up all those five minute chunks during the day or add up all those five minute chunks during the week, you're going to find that before long, you will have a substantial piece of writing. So grab that time wherever you can. Number four. I want you to set aside your inner critic. We all have that voice inside of our head that says, this is garbage. <laughs> um, you look back at something you wrote and you go, oh, you cringe, right? Or I just don't have the talent. I'm not a professional writer. I'm, I'm not good enough. It's that voice inside our head that says we're not good enough no matter what it is. That comes out with our writing too. But if you can silence that voice even temporarily, and just allow yourself to write freely from the heart, whatever comes out on the page, you're going to find that even if you feel that it's not all great, there's always going to be a gem in there somewhere. And I've always written my best work when I don't even think about what I'm writing. I just let it flow. And then I go back later to edit it. We can always edit bad work on the page, but you can't edit a blank page. So you need to have something that you can work with. So the inner critic for now, say bye-bye. You can come back later and then allow yourself to write as freely as you possibly can. You're going to end up producing much more than you thought you could. All right, the fifth one is kind of a variation on number four about criticism, but this one has to do with criticism from without. 
And that is to, for now, stay the voice that says, I can't write this because so-and-so is going to criticize me or the worry that your relatives are going to read this later and be absolutely offended and angry with you. We all, especially if you're writing memoir, we all have things that, that are important to us or that, you know, our perspective is one way and other people see it another way. It's virtually impossible to go through life never upsetting anybody else. And I'm not saying that you should be willing to upset other people. I'm just saying that when you write your first draft, I want those voices to remain silent and allow what feels right to you to come out on the page. Again, with editing, you can always go back and change things later. Um, in one of my books, I had to remove a whole section of what I'd written because the person I'd written about might have recognized themselves. I didn't think they would. It was a, it was a professional that I had worked with. Um, around an illness and we have, I don't know, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of doctors in my city. But my editor was concerned that it was something that somebody might see themselves in that description. So we took it out and the book still did really well. So, you know, it's something that you can judge later, but at the point of writing it, that's not the time to be judging those things or to be determining what remains in the book and what doesn't, because your best work often comes out when you're not overthinking it. So I want you to remove the inner critic and the outer critic when you're writing your first draft. So I hope those things are helpful. Um, I'm just going to quickly review them. One is to decide, make a very firm decision. The second is to don't uh, allow yourself to wait for inspiration, but to write anyway, even if you don't feel like it. Grab the time where you can find it. Silence those two types of critic, the inner critic and the outer critic. That's for your first draft. And then you can go back and edit later on. So those are some ways that we can get you writing so that you can actually get those words down on the page and finally write your book and have it done. All right, everybody, thanks so much for spending this time with me, and I will see you again soon. Take care.